Our Passion History reading for this evening is taken from Mark chapter 15, verses 16 through 32. The soldiers led Jesus away into the house, that is, the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again, they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Divided it was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him shaking their heads and saying, So you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. This is God's word. I'm not going to look at myself. <clears throat> Thank you. We'll, we'll just close with the blessing if that's going to have to happen. So, <clears throat> if God had a refrigerator, what would be on it? Maybe we could answer that question by asking what we have, like, what do you have on your refrigerator? Um, on the side of ours, we have more practical things like, uh, what are the extra bucks from CVS? Yeah, that's on the side, and other coupons and stuff. But on the front, there's some, I actually looked at it today. Usually we have pictures, um, but uh, we just have magnets from Family Vacations, which represents family. But pictures, right? Pictures are a very common thing to put on, on the, the front of your refrigerator. So if God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. And how do we know? Well, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. For the joy set before him, he went through all the things that we heard about in our reading for tonight and a whole lot more. You know, I, whenever I read those words or I hear them or I watch something uh, based on the crucifixion, Passion of the Christ, the movie, or, or a show like that, I, to some, to some degree, I get, I get mad. I, I just, I, I get mad at, at, at these people for how they treated Jesus. What a bunch of jerks! I, I, I think to myself, and 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 I'm not saying this is okay, but in my less sanctified moments, I, I feel a tinge of satisfaction that they got what they deserved. For doing what they did to Jesus. But if we're going to be honest with ourselves, if I'm going to be honest with myself, I have to say, I put him there too. And in fact, we all did. It wasn't my idea, your idea, to, to use thorns to create a fake crown and to put it on Jesus' head. It wasn't our idea to, to put a purple robe on him or to hit him with fists and, and with a staff repeatedly. It wasn't, none of us spit on Jesus. 
None of us mocked him to his face as he was going through all of this. None of us were there to laugh at him when he couldn't carry the cross and someone else carried it for him. None of us, none of us pounded the nails into Jesus' hands and his feet or, or stood below when we hear how those, there were those who hurled insults at him, those who mocked him, those who heaped insults on him. That wasn't, we didn't do any of that. And yet at the same time, he was there because of us. As Isaiah famously and very profoundly states, he took up our pain. He bore our suffering. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And yes, it was for the joy set before him that he did all this. Not that he enjoyed it. Not that he was looking forward to it, not that, not that it was easy in any way, shape, or form. I mean, we know from that evening in the Garden of Gethsemane that he was overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death by what he was about to go through. So just because it says, for the joy set before him, it didn't make it easy, and yet at the same time, he was, I guess we could say, happy about or, or, or satisfied to know what he was accomplishing. He was satisfied to know what it meant for each and every one of us. He was happy about and satisfied to know that he was, what he was rescuing us from, which is hell. He was happy about and satisfied to know what he was saving us for, which was eternal glory with him in heaven. He certainly, our savior, he loves the idea I suppose if, he, if God had a refrigerator, he would love the idea of putting your picture on it and mine. And yet, even more, he loves the idea of you personally, body and soul, one day spending eternal life with him in heaven. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for your unconditional love, your sacrificial love, your incredible patience, that even though we weren't there, spitting on our Savior, hitting him, or doing any of those other nasty things. Uh, he was there because of us. Our sin put him there as well. And yet at the same time, what an incredible, incredible gesture that Jesus was willing to go through when he went through. And even for the joy set before him, he endured all this because he wanted, you wanted nothing more, Lord, than for us to spend eternal life with you in heaven. Thank you for your gift of a son, a savior. Thank you for your gift of faith and forgiveness and the promise of eternal life. Help each and every one of us to, to hold that near and dear to our hearts throughout our lives, that we would always, with your help and by your grace, that we would always embrace you and hold on to you tightly as our Lord and Savior, as we strive then to let our light shine in this world and to live a life that, that honors you until you gather us to your heavenly kingdom. We pray all these things in the name of our Savior Jesus, the prayer you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace.